Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and it is day 12 of the 12 days of Junk Journal Gift Ideas. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this series that was put on by several members of the Friendly Junk Journal people friendly junk journal people facebook group hey and if you could give us a thumbs up do check the description box below for the others who participated and watch their videos give them a thumb up thumbs up let them know how you found them so maybe if you didn't know that view that uh, youtuber before you can go there and say hey i found you because of linda because we'd love to share like that so today for the 12th day gift idea, we're going to take all of the things that we made. So I've got all these little goodies laid out here so I can kind of keep my eye on what am I making today. And I've grabbed a few supplies. So for example, this is the backer sheet from a 12 by 12 sheet of a cardstock holder type thing. I think I've got the front here. It's a lot thinner. So it was just a cardstock stack. And this one's a little bit thicker. I may use both of these. And then I went through my stash and I kind of color coordinated some packages. In here, I have some fabric I may or may not use. I've got some gel prints, some mixed media pages. This is some scrapbook paper. And I may pull some other items from my stash as well. So what I thought I would do for my portfolio to hold all of these things is I want to sit down and make three pages of decorated elements. So they're going to have all kinds of papers all over it. And then I may put in a couple of what I call plain papers that may or may not have pockets on them when we get done. And then I'll have plenty of space to be able to put all the things in a container holder, paper clip pocket of some sort. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of sort through this and lay out my first page. And then I'll just kind of walk you through what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm starting out with a Bible page, a family Bible page. And then I've kind of ranged, if you will, a few of my mixed media pages. Like this is where I was cleaning off the dauber after a painting session. This is, looks like a smooth gel print. This is a gel print. I think this is a gel print. This is where I was going through the stencil, possibly with a dauber. Anyhow, I just picked a few colors and I thought these would be great bases for my pages. So what I'm going to do now is spend some time going around the edges with distressed ink. I'll trim these down to fit and then I'll start adhering them down. I guess basically I'm kind of making a Franken page, if you will. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done them. I thought that maybe just using up the scraps of paper that I have would give some interesting looks here. All right, so I've basically just collaged all over the sheet. So what I want to do now is spend some time either cutting it off or folding over onto the backside so I can use some of these pieces. I think I'm going to start by cutting this portion off. Okay, I think I'm at a point right now that I just want to kind of fill this all in. I'm going to save the fabric and some of these other pieces for when I have the journal put together and I want to make pockets and whatnot. So now I'm just going to go around the edges distressing and gluing down where I need to glue down. Well, there's one page started, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other two, probably off camera, and then I'll come back once I have those ready, and we'll move on to the cover. I've made a few pages, so here's the page that I made with y'all, and then, or was it this one? I don't remember now, <laughs> but I did make a few, what I call Franken page. I've left them relatively plain. I haven't added any real decorations to them, but I do know that I want some pockets and tuck spots in order to hold all of the elements that are part of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. So I've got a book page here. This happens to be from a Bible encyclopedia. And what I want to do is first fold it in half so it's a little bit stronger. And then I'm going to put some glue inside here and glue this together. Use my bone folder to help marry those papers together. 
So I want to make a pocket that will fit across my page, basically going this direction. So I'm going to start with this piece of paper and trim off. Actually, I don't need to trim it yet. Let's see. I want to use my scoring tool and I'm going to score it about, oh, half an inch. So I'll score. So I've made a score mark here. I'll go ahead and fold it back out of the way. And then I'm going to go over here to the five and a quarter inch mark and score that. And then kind of looking at that, come out about a half an inch and trim off the excess. So I now have this side that I can score. Okay. I want to go ahead, I'll just unfold it. And then I want to go ahead and fold this down across the top. So it'll give it a nice finished edge. I'm going to glue this piece together. So this now measures roughly one, two, three, four and a quarter inches about. And what I want to do is make a pocket across the bottom. So I'm just going to use my grid here as a guide and come up about oh, an inch and a quarter from the bottom and fold this up and I'll crease that. And this can go to the back. So basically I've just made a double layer pocket. So I've got a pocket space here and then I'll have a pocket space in the back. So now what I'm going to do is just go around the whole thing with some distress ink. All right. So what I want to do now is I've got this little area here that I want to put something down and I've got some fabric. So what I thought I would do is cut a little piece to fit in here. I'm going to clean away any of the frayed edge fibers and I will glue this down right in the middle. I'm not using a lot of glue. I'm just putting a little bit just to hold it in place because I am going to my sewing machine. If you're not going to sew, then you'll want to be meticulous and put down a good layer of glue. And then I've got this piece of mixed media paper. It's where I used a stencil and sprayed it with some tattered angels. And I want to put that right up here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down and glue this into place. And then we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew around this rectangle and I'm going to sew around this rectangle. So one moment. So I'm over at my sewing machine and I've had other people ask, I just use regular sewing thread. In this case, I have a large spool that is normally for like a, um, surging machine because it's a big cone of thread, but cotton thread, the polyester fiber thread, any kind of thread that you would normally use for sewing garments will work with sewing with paper. I have it set with a regular needle and I have it set up as a zigzag stitch. The stitch length on mine is an electronic machine, so I have it on two and two. And I'll just start here in this little area and stitch across. Now that I've got to the end, I'm going to raise my presser foot and rotate it around and then continue stitching. So I've got this area done. So let's go up here to this portion. So I've stitched all the way around that one. So now I've got this portion stitched. What I want to do next is I want to create the finished pocket, if you will, but I want to be able to glue on this bottom and have the full depth of the pocket, just in case something I put in there needs that full space. So I'm just putting about a three quarters of an inch strip wide of book page and I will trim it off here and I will cut this at an angle across here like so. I'll also cut an angle up there and there and now what I'm going to do is pull these little flaps in and glue them down and then this piece will fold back This piece will fold in and this piece will fold in and now I can apply glue across here, here and here and that'll give me a nice little pocket. I have the chipboard backer piece from the cardstock 12 by 12 sheet and I have a bunch of the papers left over from making the pages. So now what I want to do is go through these and basically I think I'm going to cover these front and back so that the whole thing's covered just like I did on the pages. So I'm just going to lay these all out and kind of decide where I want everything to go, what colors I like the most, 
and then I will glue them all together. Okay, I've kind of figured out my composition, if you will, of what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to start adhering these down and I'll trim where necessary and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so I've got one side glued together. So now I'm just going to start collaging on the back side and do the same thing. I don't have to come all the way down because I'm going to fold this up and it will become a pocket. So I'm just kind of reevaluating here and see how far down I need to come down. I think what I'll do is measure it and then that way I don't go beyond that. So basically, since I'm going to fold this up, it will come up to this line. So all I need to do is put enough papers down across here to cover this area. And I think I have just the right amount right here. So I'm just going to glue these together and then I'll be able to finish my cover. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off one inch because I don't need it to be the full 12 inches wide. So I'm going to trim off about an inch, not quite a full inch off the side. I want my cover just to be a little bit larger than the pages that are inside to help hold everything. And then I'm going to rotate this around and go about eight and three quarters of an inch and score this across here. I'm going to flip it over and score it again. That way it's easier to fold. And since I changed my measurements a little bit, I may have to fill in a gap up here. So I'm going to look and see what I need to do. All right, so I do have a little bit of a gap here. So I'm just gonna come in. Looks like I may even have, I do. I just have a piece of scrapbook paper here that may be the perfect width and length. That'll work. All right, so I'm just gonna trim this to fit and apply some Distress inks and glue it down. How this looks, I think what I'm gonna do is like a Franken page, we sew the seams together. So I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and sew all the way around all of the seams. So I'm just going to go in and sew each of the areas and then I'll probably go all the way around the outside edge. It's been sewn all the way around as you can see. So now what I'm going to do is make sure that this is scored really well and then glue it down. Just gonna put a couple of acrylic blocks on there so it can dry for a moment and then I'm gonna look around in my stash and decide what I want to put on the front cover for a element or design. Well the glue is pretty much dry so what I need to do next is to fold it and make it into an actual cover so I'm going to fold it over and crease it. And then I found in my stash an image from the Artful Journal Kit and I like the way that looks. I think what I want to do, I was trying to decide if I want to put fabric behind it or if I want to mat it with a piece of cardstock. I don't know, I kind of like that look of a little bit of fabric peeking out. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the fabric to the back side of this image. I may ruffle it just a little bit. So I'll put a little bit of glue down and then just kind of scrunch it up just a little bit into the glue. And that'll kind of give it a little bit of a, a ruffled look around the edge. Okay, I like the way that looks. So this is how it will look on the front cover. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the sewing machine and stitch right around this outside edge. Basically, it's decorative. It will kind of help hold that fabric into place. If you don't have a sewing machine, you don't have to. You could go ahead and glue it straight down. But I'm going to sew. Then I'm going to take it and glue it on the front. But before I do that, I think I want to have some kind of closure here to help keep this closed. And I happen to have a little bit of this fabric left over. So I think what I want to do, do I want to poke a hole or do I want to just sew it? I think what I'm going to do is glue this down right here. So it's in just a little bit behind the image. And then this will wrap around and tie this close. So I'm just going to put a generous amount of glue all on this cover piece. 
and press it into place. I'll probably weight it with a book and let it dry and then I'll come back and we'll finish putting the insides together for our journal. So my cover is done. I went ahead and glued down a piece of the fabric in the back and then just stitched around it so it's pretty tight. I was going to wrap it and I decided that I just like the look of tying it into a bow. And this is a little bit longer than necessary so whoever gets the journal they may want to cut it off. So now what I'm going to do is stack my pages in and I will finish embellishing, if you will, adding the pockets to it after I've got it bound. So I'm looking at my pages to decide which I want where. I've also just stamped on some copy paper. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. Although I'm only putting six pages, which would be four times six is 24 pages, I guess. I don't need that many pages for the embellishments, but whoever gets this journal, they could choose to take out my stitching that I'm going to use to put this together and add more pages or take it completely apart and use it in another way. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this up in the center here. I'll grab from my junk journal tools some large paper clips. And I'll grab my template that I used for poking a pamphlet stitch. I've got my Tim Holtz Tonic Studio Craft Pick and a piece of fun foam. So what I'll do is I will V up my pages and the cover, making sure I've got it all nice and neat here. And then we're going to poke three holes. So one, two, and three. Put this away. I've got some wax linen thread and I'm going to cut a length that is three times the height of my journal. And then I've got my bookbinder's needle. Bookbinder's needle is a longer, stronger, and it has a narrow hole so that it doesn't open up the hole in your book pages. And I do offer these in my shop. I think they're two for five dollars and they're very strong. I'm pushing really hard with my fingers. You could probably see the indentation that it made, but it did not bend or break. So I'm going to start with the center, hold the little tail, and then come around to the outside, back to the center. You want to pull this up tight so it's out of the way. Then I'll go back through the center hole to the outside. Make sure I don't get anything tangled up in it. Go back to the inside. And then I'm going to slip this under that first stitch. And then I'll pull my wax linen thread in opposite directions and make sure this is nice and tight on the outside. And then tie it into a square knot. All right, so there is the base of my journal put together. So now what I want to do is go through here and start adding the 12 days embellishments and items that I've made. So I will kind of look at this and say, okay, I want to put this one on this page. What kind of pocket or tuck spot do I want to use? I did make a couple of belly bands. I took some book pages and folded them in half, glued it, and then I glued down and sewed a piece of fabric. So who knows, maybe something like that would look pretty good to help hold that in place. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna sit here and glue things together and then I'll show you what it looks like once I have everything in the journal. I have filled the pockets and as you can see it is very fluffy with all the things that we've added from the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. I've also added a few extra things as well. So in the front pocket I decided to put day one and two. So those are right here in the front. I can't remember which day this was. This is the notepad journal card and I just thought it fit really well here in the front pocket. Then on the back side of the pocket, I put in the day three, which is the envelope and the little journal card. And then here's just a little card I made and decided to stick in. 
I use Beauty is Soul Deep and from the Butterfly Beauties Cube and then a little scrap of fabric. I didn't put anything on some of the pages really other than just a little bit of stamping because I figured whoever got this journal could then add their notes or whatever they so choose. I chose to put the shaker card behind a belly band so that it would have plenty of room and I've included an envelope that the shaker card should fit inside of. Over here, I chose to give one of my mixed media journal cards that I made during the live stream. And here on the bottom is a tiny little envelope that I made and I put a little calico collage image. So I thought just a little touch of something else in there. This is the page that had the, or the day that had the little tags. So I'm just kind of put it where it's spread out just a little bit because it's bulky. Uh, this was just a tear-off sheet that I happened to have on my desk, so I thought, why not include it? Uh, one of my journal cards that Norella made for me, this is my image that I took of the flowers in my yard, and then she's gone in with some graphics using some of my mixed media pages behind there. I thought, why not? Here's a little journal card that I made out of an artist trading card size and some scraps of paper just playing around. And then I had some little cards that someone sent to me, and then I made an altered paper clip. A while back so I thought well I'll just include that it has the same fabrics I didn't put anything in the center here again I figured whoever gets this journal they may want to take out my stitching and then add more pages to it in this pocket I made a diagonal cut pocket and then I just had a couple of little things this is a little tag I made I didn't even put fibers on it I'm just sticking it in here another little journal card that I made. This was a bookmark I made a long time ago and in fact it's got my old MSN email address on it. That's how old it is. Uh, here are the little Christmas cards and the envelopes that I made. So those will fit in here. This is the corner tuck spot. So this just is a corner hugger. It slips off the page and then you can slip it right back on. You could also tuck things up underneath there if you so choose. Another altered paper clip. This time I have a little journal card in there. And then I just grabbed a few of these little tear off pages. I just thought they would be fun to have as little notes. I put the pop up card underneath a belly band. I really like how this pop up card turned out. I thought it was pretty cute. And there is a envelope that it should fit inside of. This is the day that I put the gift card holder. And because the trifold envelopes were so thick, I ended up putting them in the back of my journal in a big pocket so that uh, it had a little bit more room. I'll get it put back together again. And then this ties somewhat shut. It's a little fluffy. <laughs> it won't be near as fluffy when you take out some of the extra elements that are in here, but I thought it turned out pretty good. And it's generic enough for the cover that whoever gets this journal can choose to dress it up, add their own sayings and sentiments and whatnot. All right, everybody, this is it. This was day 12 of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Hey, again, go down in that description box, click on those others who have also created projects. I know you want to check those out as well. Do check out my social media connectors as well as my Facebook group, the friendly junk journal for people and know that I go live on Monday at 3 45 PM central standard time. And I will show how to make journals much like I did here today. All right, everybody. Thank you so much again. Thumbs up, share this video, subscribe if you haven't, comment below. Y'all take care. Bye.